Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Sean Hodgins and welcome back to my channel. So usually when I'm doing a new project that involves circuits or components that I've never used before, I'll make a small demo circuit board with just that component to test it out so that I don't build some giant thing that doesn't end up working. And it's usually a good thing to do. So my upcoming project is no different. I'm actually going to be doing a project that involves sampling over 500 analog sensors. So I found this cool multiplexer that actually does 32 channels to one. So in the future project, I'm gonna be using two of them to do like a matrix. But right now I designed this simple board that just takes that chip and allows you to collect data from or send data out of 32 other channels from one line on the microcontroller, whatever you're using. It's just gonna be a really simple, quick project just to test it out, but I think people may find it useful. Let's go. So as you can see, this is called the Mega Mux. That's what I called it anyways. The way it works, you have five digital pins connected to your microcontroller, and then the pin you wanna control for the 32 inputs or outputs. And what you do is you set those five pins either high or low, and that selects which pin is selected on this chip. So theoretically, you can connect up to 32 things and have it be read by just one pin on the microcontroller. Of course, it does take more than just one pin. I think this one requires eight plus the pin you're reading. So you need eight to control the data lines and then the one to read in. Then it saves you another 24 on the microcontroller. So if you're trying to, like I said, read 32 sensors on one pin, this is how you do it. So I'm gonna make a quick program, wire this up and uh, Test it out. Okay, so basically what I have put together here is I've got an Arduino and I've got the Megamux connected to 32 LEDs, 16 on each side, and they're all going through one pin and one single resistor into one pin on the Arduino. And then I've got the rest of the pins, which I'll show you in the program, connected to the Arduino to select which pin is output. So let's go through the program, I'll show you how it works. Okay, so to start off, we've got the pins for uh, the selection. So selecting which pin on the MUX between one and 32 is going to be selected and tied to the output to the Arduino, so digital pin 13, 12, 11, 10, and nine the Arduino are connected to those. They're labeled as A0 to A4 on here. I've called them S. Then we've got chip select, which we're just gonna leave low for this uh, program, but if you have multiple ones, you can actually choose which one you want to change. So if you have multiple muxes, you don't wanna change them all if they're tied to the same digital pins, which is pretty cool. Um, we have WR, you have to set that low to be able to change the pins and then when you set it high, it latches them all so they can't be changed. So no matter what you do, they'll be the same. Then enable, that's just enabling this chip. You set it low, it works. You set it high, it doesn't do anything. And then uh, in pin, that's the input or output that we're using. In this case, because we've got the LEDs, we're using it as an output. So right from the get-go, we set all the uh, pins low just because and we set them all to outputs and low and we enable the serial so we can debug if there's any issues, which there won't be. From there, I've made a subroutine called pin select, which just takes a number between zero and 32, and it sets WR low, which is needed to do to write the new configuration. Then it has a for loop for the five different states of the five pins. So state one, this little function called bit read in Arduino will take the integer that you have and it will read the bit of this integer and this bit starting 
from the least significant bit to the most significant bit. So if this for loop is zero, this is gonna read the first bit, which is gonna change the first pin. It's gonna read all five. So if this says one, if it's integer of one, it's gonna be zero, 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 one. If this is 32, or 31 I should say, it's gonna be one, 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 one. And that is going to change the state of the multiplexer and then after that state is changed, we set WR high. And when we set that high, that latches all the pins, it's good to go, and it will output. And then in the for loop, we run this subroutine inside of a for loop from 0 to 31. So it's going to pick, it's just going to cycle through all the pins. So what it's going to do is it's going to select the pin, it's going to set that pin high so the LED goes high, and it's going to wait 100 milliseconds, then it's going to set it low again. So if we plug it in, and we program it okay now it's dim but you can see it's cycling through all of the LEDs and if we open the serial monitor you can see that it's displaying the binary output just based on this little loop we have here and uh, you can run these really fast so if we change this to 100 milliseconds to 10 which means it'll take 320 milliseconds to do all of the lights and you get a really fast light display and you can select any one at any time how cool is that so let's throw some photoresistors in here and uh, we'll measure a couple of them I don't know how many I have but maybe I'll do like 16 and see what happens okay now I managed to scramble together 16 of these photoresistors I've got them connected in a voltage divider so I modified the program slightly and now it reads the analog voltage of one side of the 16 of them and I'll go through the program so again just like last time same inputs all this stuff this is going to be an input because we're reading the analog voltage of the voltage divider so now we have this as an input that's what's different and uh, we're not doing any averaging or anything so it's going to be really really noisy so now everything's the same except we're doing an analog read and we're just printing it out. So I've got it programmed on here now. So if we look at the numbers, they're not too amazing. They don't really mean much right now. But they're all taking in light and it's going through each one of them displaying the number. So like 0 to 15, it's displaying the analog read of each one. So if we go to the serial plotter, which is a interesting tool. So we can see lots of noise, looks really noisy. It's just going through them from 0 to 16. So if we cover the first three, you're going to see a pattern as it goes through them. The first three are seeing a shadow right now. If we move that to the last three, you'll see it looks the same, but now it's at the end of the cycle. And I could put like a step in there so you can see where the cycle begins and ends, but we're just demonstrating, right? So it works, and this is exactly what I needed to do. So pretty cool. Glad everything's working, which means I can move on to the new project. So, as usual, this project, this small, simple project, is open source. So if you would like to recreate it or use these boards for your own testing, they'll be available on GitHub, and I'll probably even have a link to my PCBWay store, where if you order them through there, it actually gives me like a percentage of the sale or something like that. It's kind of cool, so you can find that down below. And also, I have to give great thanks to my patrons on Patreon. They will be receiving one of these boards as well as a few other boards that I just ordered. And that's one of the benefits if you become a patron. Uh, you help me do these projects, the simple ones, the big ones, all of them. I can't thank you enough. So anyways, everyone, as usual, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up and be sure to subscribe so that you can see what project is coming up. It's really cool and I'm going to be giving some hints to my patrons as well. They'll actually know exactly what it is because I'll tell them. So anyways, everyone, you know the deal. Be good and have a good day.